From an early age, I was introduced to the love of learning by my parents. This learning was centered around literature, and to an extent, history and art. Our favorites included classics, such as The Hobbit, The Secret Garden, and The Magician's Nephew. But what I understood of the big, wide world of science and engineering came from my grandmother. It was at her house that I pored over those How It Works books and built water filters and played with the circuit kit. Every birthday, I would add some new science-related book to my collection about everything from female archaeologists to microscopes. I learned about bees, cars, chemistry, and ecology. And it was through this exposure to the many facets of science and engineering that I fell in love with something called STEM, an acronym that stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Math. STEM is the magical industry responsible for a rapidly advancing world. Space exploration, cancer research, cutting edge technologies. STEM workers are making what was once thought preposterous commonplace. The STEM workforce is crucial to America's innovative capacity and global competitiveness. But there's a problem. The United States is falling behind. The, the World Economic Forum ranks the United States as 48th in quality of math and science education out of 133 developing and developed nations. These discrepancies translate to a STEM worker shortage. The United States may be short as many as 3 million highly skilled STEM jobs by 2018, workers by 2018. But the shortage doesn't stop there. Of all STEM jobs, only 24% are held by women even though women hold around 50% of jobs in the overall workforce. Women hold a low share of STEM undergraduate degrees, particularly in engineering. And, when, and women with a STEM degree are less likely than their male counterparts to work in a STEM occupation. This underrepresentation of women can even be seen as early as high school, where, STEM, where uh, male students are more likely than females to take at STEM AP exams, such as Calculus BC, Physics B, and Physics C. Male students are also more likely to take advanced computer science and engineering courses. There are many theories as to why women are underrepresented in these fields, but many have decided that women simply don't like math and science. Even at this high school level, teachers and students sometimes stereotype girls interested in advanced physics and math. Aline Pollock, a professor of creative writing at the University of Michigan, wrote, the only woman in the room, why science is still a boys' club. She spoke to a Yale phys physics undergrad who was one of three females in her AP physics class in high school, and the only female after the other two dropped out. Another undergrad was the only female in her AP physics class from the start. Her classmates teased her mercilessly. You're a girl. Girls can't do physics. She expected the teacher to put a stop to it, but he didn't. As Pollock, herself a physics major who didn't go into academia, even though she graduated at the top of her class, writes, I didn't continue in physics because not a single professor, not even the advisor who supervised my senior thesis, encouraged me to go to graduate school. When told that men do better on math tests than women, women tend to score worse. When not told this, the two genders scored equally well. There isn't an inherent ability difference between the sexes. In fact, the stereotypical reasoning behind the STEM worker shortage is in fact one of the very things keeping women from entering and staying in STEM fields. Another widely accepted explanation is that women drop out to have and care for children. And while this is certainly true to an extent, it doesn't explain why the male to female ratio is so much higher in STEM fields than in the broader workforce. It really comes down to the fact that women are marginalized and discriminated against. An MIT committee found that even if women received a faculty position, they are often paid less than their male co colleagues, 
have access to less lab and office space, win fewer awards, and have access to fewer resources. Female software developers earn 80% of what men do. These statistics hold true even in larger studies, including one from the American Institute of Physicists, which looked at, at 15,000 physicists from 130 countries. This marginalization is likely the result of bias. Females in STEM fields face constant prejudice against them, not just from their male colleagues, but from other females. For example, when presented with identical lab manager resumes from both a John and a Jennifer, both male and female professors tended to pick the John as the better candidate and offer him more money for the position. This inequality also crops up in male-driven Silicon Valley, where female entrepreneurs find it hard to find funding because they aren't perceived as leaders, but as mothers. As a result, females only start about 8% of venture-backed tech startups. But there are things that can be done. Karen Purcell, a, uh, an entrepreneur, engineer, and author, has, prevent, has presented a variety of ways to encourage women in STEM fields. First, exposure. It's important that both girls and boys are exposed to STEM in positive ways from a young age, so that upon reaching high school, those who are inter interested can pursue these fields without a negative connotation. Second, special programs. There are more and more female-centered STEM programs every year, but they need more support on both the national and local level. These programs are so important because without understanding the opportunities available to students of math and science, young women believe they have made a mistake when faced with the challenges of completing a STEM major, so they leave. Third, mentorship. Beyond being a career advisor, a role model, and an advocate, female mentors in STEM fields can help to assure girls going into STEM that they are not alone. In the end, Females aren't going into STEM fields because they feel, because society is telling them not to. And this seems like a big and scary problem that we, as a people, are, are powerless to solve. But it isn't. Changing the makeup of the STEM workforce will take time. But, in the wise words of Marie Curie, life is hard for everyone, but what of that? We must have perseverance, and above all, confidence in ourselves. We must believe that we are gifted for something and that this thing must be attained. Thank you.